FOMO, fear of missing out, is the social anxiety you feel when all your friends get invited to Timmy's birthday party, but you're stuck at home watching TV with your creepy uncle. We live in a world where almost everybody is psychologically dependent on social media, and that's great news if you're an app developer, because it's easy to harness people's social anxiety to grow your user base and make your VC backers unbelievably rich and happy. In today's tutorial, you'll learn how to manipulate FOMO from a marketing perspective by building an invite-only app inspired by Clubhouse from a technical perspective. Marketers have been using FOMO FOMO for thousands of years, but the modern term was coined in 1996 by Dr. Dan Herman. It's used shamelessly as a marketing technique all over the tech world. Buy Bitcoin, get on TikTok, get a Google Plus invite, and most recently, get on Clubhouse. Clubhouse, as the name implies, is an invite-only app where you can listen to people talk about stuff, like Elon Musk creating more FOMO for Bitcoin, for example. As an end user, it's kind of like being in an office building where you get to go to a bunch of meetings all day. Sounds like fun, but you can only get in the Clubhouse if someone invites you with your phone number. But once you're in, you then get two invites to send to your best friends. Then they invite two of their best friends, and the cycle continues until you have a massive FOMO pyramid. It's not a pyramid scheme. It is a, it's not even a scheme per se, it's... And that's a much more cost-effective way to get users than spending most of your Series A on Facebook ads. The whole thing is a marketer's dream, really. You have all the cool kids talking about it on social media, and if you happen to be a loser without an invite, you'll need to go beg for one from your best friend. But when your best friend says they gave out their invites to their better best friends, you'll just have to pretend like you don't care. And that's what we call 100% organic, locally sourced fear of missing out. FOMO can literally get people to do anything, like invest in assets that are worth almost nothing, buy stupid products that nobody needs, and even and download apps that aren't all that good. And now that you know how powerful it is, let's have some fun and take a look at how to implement FOMO from a technical perspective. Now, before we get into the code, I want to point out that we'll be going through things pretty quickly, but you can reference the full source code on GitHub and also the article on Fireship.io. We'll be using React and Firebase, or the refi stack for this demo, but you can apply the same logic to virtually any tech stack. If we open up the demo, you'll notice a sign-in page where the user is first required to enter their phone number. If that phone number is not on the invite list in our database, then they can't sign in. The invite list is just a database collection in Firestore where each document ID in the database is the phone number that's been invited. Then it contains a field of sender that has the user ID of whoever sent the invite. But if the number is on the invite list, then the user can sign in. When the button is clicked, it will send a text message to that phone number, then have the user verify the code in this form, at which point the user is signed in to the application. And once authenticated, they can then invite the phone numbers of their best friends. This will create a new invite in the database, which will then trigger a cloud function to send that user a text message inviting them to use the app. Now, one important thing to point out here is that Firebase will automatically send the first text message for the user to verify the sign-in. The second message, though, that goes to the invited user will need to be sent programmatically, which is not something that Firebase can do. But there are many programmatic SMS APIs out there, with the most famous option being Twilio. I'm not a huge fan of Twilio myself, but luckily there are a lot of good alternatives out there. I've heard good things about MessageBird, and the API we'll be using in this video is Plevo. It has a really nice UI, and will give you a free phone number and credit to get started in the sandbox. Now let's go ahead and jump into the source code. To build this app, I started with a generic React application using the Create React App tool. Inside the project, I've installed two dependencies, Firebase and React Firebase hooks. The entire front-end source code is contained inside the app.js file. If we go in there, we'll import our Firebase dependencies, which include Firebase Auth and Firestore, along with a few built-in hooks from React, and then the use auth state hook from React Firebase hooks, which allows us to listen to the state of the current user, whether they're logged in or logged out. And lastly, we have use collection data, which allows us to make a query to a collection in the Firestore database and update the UI in real time whenever the data in that collection changes. From there, we'll need to connect our Firebase project to the React app. We can do that by creating a web app from the Firebase console, which will give us a set of project credentials to copy. And while we're in the Firebase console, let's go over to the authentication tab and make sure to enable phone authentication. Now we can go back to our code and initialize the Firebase app. The two SDKs that we'll be using are Firebase Auth and Firestore, so let's go ahead and reference those as global variables. In the root app component, we're going to listen to the user's authentication state. If we do have a user, which means they're logged in, then we'll go ahead and render the send invites component, which takes the current user as a prop. 
Otherwise, we'll show the sign up component. The initial user state will be signed out, so let's go ahead and focus on the sign up component. Now, in order to implement phone authentication, the user will need to verify a CAPTCHA. Normally, this means the user has to go through the annoying process of verifying that they're not a spam bot. However, the modern user-friendly way to do this is with an invisible reCAPTCHA, which will attempt to verify the user in the background and only ask them questions when it's absolutely necessary. To implement an invisible reCAPTCHA, we'll first set it up as state on the component using the useState hook and then we're going to reference a native DOM element with the useRef hook. You need to have an empty div somewhere in the UI to attach the reCAPTCHA to. From there, we'll implement a callback and the useEffect hook. If the reCAPTCHA has not been defined yet, then we'll go ahead and define it by creating a new instance of a Firebase auth reCAPTCHA verifier. It takes the empty div as its first argument, then options as the second argument. We'll just want to make sure that it has a size of invisible. From there, we can verify it by calling the verify method, which returns a promise. And then once verified, we'll go ahead and set the reCAPTCHA instance on the component state. And now that we have that state, we can go into the JSX and render a phone number verification component that passes the reCAPTCHA down as a prop. That allows us to only show the login form after the reCAPTCHA has been verified. Now let's implement the phone number verification component. Its purpose is to collect the user's phone number digits from a form then make a read request to Firestore to validate that that number has been invited. If the number has been invited, then we'll set that value to true, and then the user can log in, and Firebase will return a confirmation result, which is just a confirmation that they sent a text message to that user. The user will then need to verify that code in a second form, and once that's verified, we can consider them fully authenticated. Now, one final thing I'm doing here is formatting the number with a plus one in front of it. When working with any programmatic phone API, they almost always want the phone number in Echo 164 format. It's just a plus sign with the country code followed by the main phone number digits. Now in the JSX, we're going to create a controlled form input with React by setting the value to the digit state, then we'll update the state with the current value by listening to the on change event and setting the digits to the value in the form when they change. From there, we can implement the use effect hook and give it the phone number as a dependency. If the phone number length equals 12, then we know we have a full length phone number, at which point we can make a read request to the database to see if that phone number exists in the invites collection. Ref get will read the document, and if it exists, then we'll go ahead and set the invited state to exist, which will either be true or false. From there, we can go back to the HTML and we'll add a button that is hidden if the user is not invited. But if they are invited, then we'll fire the sign in with phone number method when the button is clicked. We'll make it an async function so we can await the auth sign in with phone number method, which takes the phone number and the reCAPTCHA as arguments. The return value is the confirmation result, which again is a confirmation from Firebase that they sent a text message to that user. The final step in this component is to then show another form when that confirmation result is present. It's also a controlled input on the code state on the component. Then below that, we have a button that will fire the verify code function when it's clicked. The verify code function is also an async function that will confirm the code on the confirmation result. And that's how we get an invited user logged into the app. But now that they're logged in, we need to give them a way to send invites to their friends. The front end implementation happens here in the send invites component. First, we have a database query that grabs all of the invites that that user has sent. If the query length is less than two, then we allow that user to create a new invite in the database with somebody else's phone number. That's easy enough, but the tricky part is how do we now send a text message to that user? That's a job that needs to happen from a backend server, which we can implement in Firebase using cloud functions. By running the Firebase init functions command, I can quickly add a backend to this React app. Let's go into the functions directory and open the index.js file. Now what we want our backend to do is run a cloud function whenever a new Firestore document is created in the invites collection. That's really easy to achieve by simply exporting a function that points to that path in the database. Then we use onCreate to run some backend code whenever a new document is created there. To send a text message, we need three pieces of information. We need the from phone number, which is our phone number, the to number, which is the one the user has invited to the app, and then the actual message that we want to send to that phone number. Now, in order to send the text, we need to use a third-party service like Twilio, or in this case, Plevo. Plevo has an SDK for Node, so we can install that in the functions directory with NPM. We can then import it 
and then initialize the client with our ID and token, which you'll find on the dashboard when you sign up for this service. And finally, we send the text message by calling client messages create. That returns a promise, so we'll make it the return value from the function because a cloud function expects a promise as its return value. You can deploy your backend to the cloud by running Firebase deploy only functions. And now if you go to the UI and create a new invite, it should send a text message to that user. Congratulations, you no longer have FOMO, but JOMO, because you can just build your own FOMO-driven app from scratch. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there, but I do want to point out that the code we've implemented is not fully secure yet, because we haven't implemented Firestore rules yet. If you want to learn how to build fully secure features with React and Firebase, consider becoming a pro member at Fireship.io and taking my full course on that topic. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.